So I'm reading from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 13. The coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues, as of fire, appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Pergia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. Hello everybody. Great to have you with us for our living room service at Pentecost. Alex has just read it. At Pentecost we celebrate how the Holy Spirit came on the disciples, on the friends of Jesus, and gave them power, gave them supernatural power and changed their lives. And just to put it out there right at the beginning, this is what still happens today. God is not dead, he is still changing lives, he is still empowering us, and he changes lives. Some of those people whose lives have been changed by God, you've already seen in the video um, and in the in this service, um, and you've already gotten to know a couple of them. Um, some others you will still meet in the next couple of minutes. But I am as well standing here as someone whose life has been changed by God, whose life um, has been transformed. Um, I have found joy and peace and satisfaction and, and life in Jesus. And so my prayer is for you that while you watch this, um, it will be so evident to you that this isn't just some gray old theory, but this is real. This is real. This is the truth. And I know that questions of truth and reality are not without dispute, not without controversy in this, in this time that we live in. Um, I mean, in the end, can't just everybody say, well, this and that is true. And um, well, who really knows what truth is anyway? Um, and in the end, do we not all have different interpretations and views on things, maybe even on the same events? Um, so yeah, the question of truth can be pretty confusing sometimes. But it's not just us now who say, well, what really happened? But it's the same at Pentecost. That's the same there. People ask themselves, what has really happened at Pentecost? We saw it in the text. Some people were convinced this is a supernatural act of God. This is nothing else but God himself working. I mean, all of these people, they were there in the, they were from the region. How would they suddenly be able to speak in languages they didn't know, Greek and Arabic and whatever else language there might have been. How should that have been? So some part of the people were convinced, no, this is an act of God, this is supernatural. Some other people though said, well, supernatural? No, these guys are drunk. They are out of their heads. They are, they are, they are just drunk with wine. So don't say this is supernatural. This is, this is just alcohol. This is what it is. 
So what really happened? Well, in the end, you will have to make a decision what you believe, which version, version you believe what happened. But I want to invite you to join me to see how the story continues and to get to know one of the people, one of the main characters basically of the story of Pentecost um, and to see what happened in his life and what he experienced in his life. So while the people are probably still arguing, is this, is this alcohol, is this God, what happened? Um, there is this guy called Peter, um, we see it in the text later, um, if you kept on reading um, the text, it says how Peter, um, full of the Holy Spirit, he gets up and says, listen to me, I've got something to say to you. This isn't uh, because we're drunk, it's nine in the morning. I mean, who is drunk at nine in the morning? Um, no, this is God, this is the Holy Spirit poured out on us and God doing what he promised all along. And he speaks in freedom and courage about the gospel of Jesus Christ, about who Jesus is, his life and his death and his resurrection. And he does it in complete freedom, um, ex exclaiming basically who Jesus is. So that's the first blessing Peter experienced in his own life. That's what I want to talk about first. I want to just zoom in on who this guy Peter is who gets up and says, no, we're not drunk. Um, we are full of the Spirit. So, the first thing, the first blessing Peter experienced in his own life is the love of God in Jesus Christ. Peter had experienced the love of God, the forgiveness of God in his own life. He had been one of the 12 disciples, one of the 12 closest friends of Jesus. And he was particularly eager. <laughs> he was particularly devoted. The one who probably usually spoke first, the one who was usually quite enthusiastic and trying things out and being all in. Yeah, it's been basically like an all or nothing type of guy. That's Peter. One example where you can see this pretty well is when Jesus just shortly before he gets arrested, we see this in the Bible as well, how Jesus wants to um, wash the disciples' feet. And he gets to Peter and Peter said, Lord, you want to wash my feet? No, no, this isn't happening. Um, and Jesus said, um, unless I wash you, you have no part in me. If I don't wash you, you have no part in me. You can't belong to me if I don't wash you. And so Peter, probably not quite understanding <laughs> what Jesus means, says though, well, Jesus, if you have to cleanse me, if you have to wash me, then don't just wash my feet, but wash my head and wash my hands, wash everything of me. So it's basically all or nothing for Peter. And you could say, wow, what a guy. That's incredible. Um, what a role model. You have to be like Peter. Well, a couple of chapters later, um, the strong, sure, devoted, courageous guy um, who could have been very proud of himself crashes and fails. He denies Jesus three times. He denies that he even knows Jesus. So in Peter's life, we can see something that is so profoundly true about all of us. None of us are able to lead a perfect God-fearing, God-pleasing life out of ourselves. It's not possible. The hard you may try or not try, we all um, can't live a perfect life pleasing to God out of our own. In Romans 3.23 3, it says, For there is no distinction, there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all have sinned. This is true for you if you have been following Jesus 
for a long time just like Peter and you might feel the temptation sometimes to be proud of yourself and how devoted you are and how well you're doing in following Jesus. In the end there is nothing to boast about. <laughs> there is nothing about our own works that is to be, to be boasted about but the grace of God that has been given freely to us. Not because we've worked and because we've been so great, but because God is great. We've got all reason to boast of, of God and his love. We have all sinned. This also applies to you if you, like Peter, have been following Jesus for some time and you failed. Maybe you, you haven't done something that you should have done or you did something that you shouldn't have done. Maybe you lied to someone or um, you did something else that you know isn't right. And I want to encourage you today. I want to say that you are in good company. We have all sinned. There is none of us who are perfect and who've got it right. So um, yeah, there is grace for you. Grace means that you can come to God without your own works and say, <laughs> look God, I know I've sinned, um, please forgive me. I know I don't deserve it, um, but please, please show me grace. And that's what he does. So get up from the situation where you're in, maybe whatever it is, but you can get up and come to Jesus again. This also applies to you, we have all sinned, if you are not yet following Jesus at all. Jesus says to Peter, if I do not wash you, you have no part in me. If I do not wash you, you can't belong to me. And this may sound harsh at first, but it's the gospel. It's amazing. You can be cleansed by Jesus of all your guilt because you're so loved by God the Father. And you can be cleansed by your, from your guilt, from your sin, um, from a guilty conscience. You can be cleansed. You can get rid of all of it through the blood of Jesus. Not by your own works, but by coming to Jesus and wanting forgiveness, asking for forgiveness. He was nailed to the cross for your sin, for my sin. He took all of it on his shoulders and died as a sacrifice for you and for me so that the righteousness of God, this perfect life of Jesus, would be accounted, would be put on our account. Amazing. He forgives everyone who believes in him. That's the good news. In Romans 3, 23 and 30, uh, 23, Romans 3, 22 and 23, it says, for there is no distinction as I read before, for all have, have, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but it continues and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. There's a couple of difficult words in it. It basically means that through Jesus, we have been given grace as a free gift. And we can experience forgiveness. Peter himself experiences the forgiveness of Jesus. The last chapter of the Gospel of John, um, it's a book in the Bible, talks about this as well. Jesus, after his resurrection, he died. He, he, was rose, he, he rose from the dead on the third day after he was crucified. And um, he encounters Peter. He meets Peter and forgives him. And not just that he forgives him, but he basically he, he restores. That's a bit different. He doesn't just say, well, Peter, I know you've sinned. Um, well, I'll forgive you. But it's more than that. It's the love of Jesus who, who says, Peter, you truly have been forgiven. It's fine. And he sends him on a mission, gives him a new mission for his life. That's how Jesus forgives Peter. And we'll see what happens with that later. 
um, in a couple of minutes when we come to the second blessing Peter experiences. But before we come to that, let's thank God for the love of, of, um, of Jesus. Let's thank him for what he's done for us, this amazing grace um, that he has shown us, um, that he has made a way for us to, to know God, this God of the universe, this majestic God who has been there from all of the beginning. This God is to be known by Jesus. And that's amazing. Let's thank him for the fact that each of us can come to Jesus, find grace and forgiveness in him, whether we've followed Jesus for a long time or not, whether um, we've been weak or strong lately. Um, may we be prideful and struggle with that. May we have our failures and struggle with them and with our sin. Let's come to Jesus and thank him for, for this forgiveness and for the cross. He invites us all to come and receive grace. This is the good news that everyone who believes in Jesus will have eternal life and is not lost. Let's sing together. We have just seen that Peter, the man who gets up and says, no, we have not been drunk. It's not alcohol um, that we are filled with, but the, the Holy Spirit has come on us. And that's what you see here, that this Peter has experienced the love of God in Jesus Christ. The second blessing he experienced together, together with many others on this day was the filling of the Holy Spirit. And that's the second part that I want to talk about. Literally, the last thing that Jesus says to his friends, to his disciples, is recorded in Acts 1 verse 8. And it says there, how Jesus says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Jesus' disciples had grown up in Jewish tradition and the Jewish faith. So the words that Jesus said here about a filling or a coming on of the Holy Spirit were not completely foreign to them at all, were not strange to them. They were quite familiar with the idea that the Holy Spirit would come on people and fill them. They would have heard the Old Testament stories, the, the heroes of the faith, their heroes of the faith, like David and Gideon and Samson, um, all of those heroes um, they would have heard how and seen and be familiar with the stories um, that they, that the Holy Spirit came on them and gave them power. So, and they, and these, these old heroes of the Old Testament experienced a new life after that. But up to this point, um, this was only the coming on of the Holy Spirit and the filling of the Holy Spirit was only for certain people. Up to this point, um, it was the privilege of, of only certain few that got filled with the Spirit in such a way. Kings and prophets in the Old Testament. Until God promised through a prophet called Joel um, that this would change. God promised there will come a time where, the, um, where this will change, that it will, will only be a privilege for a chosen few, but I will pour my spirit onto all flesh. That's what God promises and promised. In Joel 2, uh, verse 28 to 29, it says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit. And then the day of Pentecost comes. God fulfills his promise. The Holy Spirit comes upon all of his disciples and they receive power. Just as Jesus had said, they received power and they proclaim the good news of Jesus. 
well, of course they would proclaim the good news of Jesus. That's what they are there for. They are the disciples. No. Well, yes, uh, but they were they were scared to death. These disciples, before the filling of the Spirit, were scared. After the death of Jesus, and even after his re resurrection, they were hiding. They were hoping that no one would associate them with Jesus. They were locking themselves away. They were hiding. They, they didn't want to see other people. And they were hoping Jesus would come back soon. Uh, trying and and would get them back to heaven and, and so that they could be saved. They were scared. They were absolutely intimidated. This is who they were before the Holy Spirit came on them. So the Spirit comes on them. The disciples get completely changed. That's what happened on Pentecost. Peter gets completely changed. This guy who has denied Jesus... Who has hiding? Who was hiding with his uh, with his other friends? This guy receives power. He stands up, calms all the crowd down, and says, "Look, this is what happened. This is the gospel of Jesus." So, this is incredible. This this power that the Holy Spirit brings on His people. And the more I think about it, the more I I I read this text, I'm thinking, man, we need more of this. Man, I need more of this power of the Holy Spirit. I've seen and tasted a little bit of it. <laughs> On the weekend of our last service at the Forum Factory, some of you prayed for me that I would receive more of the Holy Spirit. And the day after was incredible. <laughs> Um, on the same day, um, the next morning, um, the next Monday, um, I talked to someone at my work about being saved by faith alone. I um, invited my boss basically to church. Um, I read two passages straight out of the Bible to another colleague. I was basically sitting in my office opening up the Bible or reading it from my screen. Um, and that that happened but i'm sure it's just glimpses it's just a little bit but that's the power of the holy spirit it's not because it was just natural <laughs> that's what happened and what good news is it that we don't have to remain a fearful bunch of people fearful followers of jesus that we do not have to live a dead and powerless life as Christians. What good news is it that we can receive power through the Holy Spirit that makes us witnesses for Jesus? Many of us have experienced and accepted the love of, of God in Jesus Christ, and many of us know that through faith alone we are forgiven and find forgiveness in Jesus. But that's, that's not it. That's not all. God has got more for us in Jesus Christ. Jesus did not ascend into heaven and say, well, now you get on with it yourselves. But he said, I'll send you a helper. I'll send you someone who leads you into all truth. I will, you will receive power. That's what Jesus said before he went into heaven. And you will be my witnesses. So through his spirit, he gives us strength to live for him and be his witnesses. In Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I'll say some more about it in a moment, but before we get to that, let's hear um, Corey and Kelly, who will talk a little bit from their own lives about what it means for them to have received power um, from the Holy Spirit. Hi, we are Kelly and Corey Miller, and we moved to Berlin in October from Oklahoma. Not sure how much you guys know about Oklahoma, but it is known as the Bible Belt of the United States. And there are churches on basically every corner. There is a lot of access to the gospel. 
lot of Christians, one of the first conversations that you have with new people is what church do you go to? So um, we felt very blessed to grow up in an environment like that. But we also have read Matthew 28 and know that the Great Commission is real and something that we can participate in. So we began praying about participating in the Great Commission, um, whether that was going or sending. And um, we felt the Holy Spirit calling us to go. So then we started to pray about where should we go. And again, we were burdened with um, Europe and Germany, Berlin in particular. Um, so as you guys know, Berlin is... Um, a very atheist city. Um, there are a lot of um, people from the Middle East that have been displaced, the refugees that are here, and um, yeah, not a ton of access to the gospel, and that's a, a big reason of why we decided to come here. Yeah, now we're here, and as you can see, we have a beautiful flat. Um, we brought our dog with us, so yeah, we're here for um, the long run, as long as we can continue to get visas. So we have our visas, we found new jobs, and um, have now been plugged in with Mosaic. And yeah, this doesn't all come naturally to us. This was not an easy decision. This um, was uh, scary to some extent. Um, family members did not approve of this at all. Um, where we're from in Oklahoma, you don't just leave home like this for extended periods of time. Um, so now that we're here, we've seen the, the Holy Spirit work in our hearts and continue to give us a burden for uh, the Germans here, the atheist Germans and the refugees that are here. And um, the Holy Spirit has also empowered us to um, strike up conversations with people when that's not natural to us, um, where we're pretty uh, introverted. Um, so it's not easy for us to make a lot of new friends. We love people. Um, we, we love our, our friends and family, but it's, it just doesn't come naturally for us to, to make a lot of new friends. Um, but for us to move here, that's, that's going to be essential. It, it, it's an essential part of why we're here is to, to meet new people and to share the gospel with them. So, yeah, we, we've clearly have seen the Holy Spirit work in us to give us a burden um, to leave our, our, our home, to, to move to a very foreign um, country, and, um, and also to continue to provide peace and comfort while we're here and empower us um, to share the gospel here in Berlin. Thanks a lot, guys. This is so good to hear from you, how you have been uh, empowered by the Holy Spirit and how you've been sent to Berlin. That's such a great testimony. Thank you so much. So what about us? We hear the report from the Bible about Pentecost, about the Holy Spirit coming on the disciples. We read about the, the changed life of Peter, and we hear from Corey and Kelly how they've been empowered and sent um, to another country, basically to the ends of the earth, um, to proclaim the good news. So what about us? How can I receive more of the Holy Spirit? How can I receive that power? First, become thirsty. In John 7, it says how Jesus um, says, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he has said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive, for as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. He was talking about the Holy Spirit. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Let him drink. This is the condition which exists. This is the condition which, which we need to have. That's what we need to have. We need to be thirsty if we want to drink from Jesus, if we want to receive more of the Spirit. And this might also be the biggest obstacle for us. It's probably, if I think sometimes about my life, that's 
that's a, an obstacle, a lack of thirst. So are we really thirsty for more of the Holy Spirit? Do we really want more of him? Or are sometimes are other things more important to us? Be it that we think that we don't need him at all, that we are fine just as it is and just fine by ourselves, be it that we are afraid of losing comfort and status, or there are other things that might keep us from thirsting for more of the Spirit. C.S. Lewis, a well-known British author, Christian as well, um, has put it in a controversial but I think pretty good way. He says, it would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures, fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered us. Like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea, we are far too easily pleased. That's what he says. We are far too easily pleased. I think that's so true for many of us. That's often true for myself, sadly. Our desires are not too strong, but they are too weak. Like all things, only God can give us this thirst. But at the same time, we can do things that make us thirsty. We can do a couple of things um, that would help us find him and seek him. We can pray. If you are not feeling thirsty, if you're not thirsty, if you don't have a desire for God at the moment, you can pray. You can pray to God and see if he won't give you this desire, if he won't make you thirsty. You can pray, you can time, take time to worship, you can um, you can think and pray what he's done, who he is. Take time to worship, sing. You can read the Bible. You can, you can meditate on Bible passages. When was the last time you fasted? There's a couple of things that we can do that could help us see God and become thirsty. The second thing, so become thirsty is the first one. The second one is ask him. In Luke 11 verse 13 it says, If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? How much more? God promises us in his word that he will give his Holy Spirit to those who ask. That's a promise of God. What a promise. So we can ask. We can become thirsty and ask. There is a promise of God that when we come to him and ask for more of the, the, the Spirit, we will receive. So these are two things you can do personally to receive more of the Spirit. Although as well it's an act of grace of God. So become thirsty and ask him. And at the same time, we as a church also want to see God. We want to see God working in, in many ways in this, in this city of Berlin. Some of this um, we've seen in this video. Um, thank you so much for everyone who sent and uploaded their videos about what they want to see God do in the city. This is so encouraging. And we know that strategy and, and planning will, might achieve a little bit, but it's, it's, not, it's not what will, will do it. God himself, in his power, needs to come, hear our prayer, and act on our behalf. That's what will need to happen, because out of our own selves, we won't be able to to bring about change, um, we, can't, we can't do this ourselves. We want to see God meet people and touch them with his love. 
that's what we want to see in the city amongst other things as well that we've just seen in the video so let's pray let's pray that god would do these things for the next six weeks that's what we want to do we want to pray we'll start a prayer meeting on zoom friday mornings 7 30 to 8 o'clock and we'll start this friday friday the 5th of june um, and we will pray <laughs> we will pray that god would move that god would do things in the city we will pray for our, our city our friends our our church that's what we want to do let's come together ask god to to move to do things let's seek him i know zoom isn't perfect <laughs> um, i would so much rather meet in person and pray but it does at this in this time where we can't just meet um it it does something um that is good for us we can hear each other pray we can commit to praying together and that's really really good so i know it's unusually uh, unusual but um feel very free to come along um we would love to have you with us um if you haven't prayed before that's fine just come and join us um but if you want to pray just come to this prayer meeting it says in habakkuk um 3 verse 2 O oh Lord, I have heard the report of you, and your work, O oh Lord, do I fear. In the midst of the years, revive it. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. Can we say this together as a church? God, come and move in our generation. Come, do your work amongst us. Move in our day. Make your works known among us. Can we do this as a church? Come, let's pray. Let's pray. And this is how we end our Habakkuk series today. Come pray with us. I'll slowly come to an end with this preach, saying that just like Peter, we can experience two things, two blessings. Can Surely we can experience more blessings, but this is two blessings we've talked about. The love of God in Jesus Christ and the filling of the Holy Spirit. In the following minutes, we will do something we've not done before um, online. Um, we won't just we won't sing together um, just straight after after this. But Simon has recorded an instrumental piece for us. It's a few minutes that are really there for for you and God, for you to interact with God. So take a moment, respond to what you've heard. You may pray, you may want to make a decision, you may be silent and listen to what God wants to say to you. Um, you might want to respond to the good news of Jesus for the first time. That Jesus took all your guilt upon himself and died for you. You may have never prayed, that's okay. You will find a prayer on the slide that can help you and you are welcome to pray. Um, and seek forgiveness for the first time of Jesus from Jesus and if you've done that we would love to hear from you we would love for you to fill in a contact card um, or to write us an email um, and to see what the next step could be but yeah we would love for you to get in touch maybe you would like to ask God for more thirst or to fill you with his Holy Spirit again just do it I would encourage you, just please take these, these next couple of minutes where there's no song, um, n no singing. Um, just use this time. Don't just go and make another coffee or look outside of the window. Um, but take this time, speak to God, listen to him and, and seek him. It's only a, a couple of minutes, I think five minutes or so. Um, so you can obviously keep doing that when you're at home um, so uh, after the service however you want to do this there might be as well other things you'd like to go ask God for um, and to um, that you want to ask him for that's completely fine just interact with him after that we'll sing a song um, 
and Angie will close the service.